this video, we're going to talk about analog to digital conversion, digital to analog conversion, and pulse width modulation with a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller. The Teensy microcontroller, or any other microcontroller for that matter, will provide you with a lot of convenient interfaces for connecting to real world devices. The simplest of these interfaces is going to be analog to digital, the simplest other than general purpose digital I.O. So analog to digital works on reading a voltage, and what happens is you read a voltage on a single analog to digital pin on your microcontroller, and that voltage programmatically is turned into an integer. Once you get that integer, you can use it to uh, do any sort of logic that you need to reason about the voltage that you're reading. So for example, let's say you have a temperature sensor, and the temperature sensor, when it's reading a very, very low temperature, like at the bottom of its range, it's going to return some sort of a voltage, and that's probably going to be close to zero volts if you're using a Teensy, let's say from zero to 3.3 .3 volts. That same temperature sensor would give you an increasing voltage as the temperature increased. So let's say that you read a voltage that was very close to the maximum limit of what the temperature sensor was going to return. We would expect that voltage to be close to 3.3 .3 volts, because that's the voltage that the Teensy is going to be operating on. Now suppose that when you read that value programmatically, you get an integer, and that integer is going to be a 10-bit value on the Teensy. The analog to digital converter on the Teensy microcontroller has 10 bits of resolution. So what that means is that a 0 to 3.3 volt reading will be reflected numerically as an integer from 0 to 1024. So basically, you have that sort of a resolution, about a thousand different possibilities, um, a thousand different integers to represent 0 to 3.3 volts, and you can convert that into a float in your program if you'd like to actually get the actual voltage reading or the actual temperature in Fahrenheit or volts or whatever. So we're going to start out by doing a simple test of the analog to digital converter on the Teensy microcontroller using a potentiometer. A potentiometer is just a fancy word for a variable resistor. And these are the kind of things that you find in uh, gain knobs, like on a stereo or a volume control. Or if you have a, uh, let's say, a joystick for a video game controller, you might have potentiometers there on each of the axes that would be used to read the position of the joystick. So the way that a potentiometer works is it has a resistive material around the circumference of the uh, potentiometer itself. And as you turn the knob around, there's something called a wiper that brushes up against that resistive material. And as that wiper travels over the potentiometer, it will change the resistance. And if you're feeding in um, a voltage on the A and B pins of the potentiometer, those are the extreme left and right pins, then the resulting voltage that you get, um, or the resulting resistance that you get between A and W, where the wiper is, will change. And it'll increase as you turn it in the clockwise direction. So by applying a voltage to the A and B pins, um, so if you were to apply, say, 5 volts or 3.3 volts to the A, A pin and ground to the B pin, then what happens is the resistance will change on the wiper as you move it around, and therefore the voltage that is sensed on the wiper pin will increase or decrease as you move it. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to connect the uh, voltage reference, which would be the A pin, to 3.3 volts, and then we're going to connect the um, ground pin to ground, which would be 0 volts, and then we're going to connect the wiper pin to pin 14, which is an analog to digital pin on our TNC microcontroller. So in this example, called multicolor LED, because eventually we're going to control a multicolor LED, the first thing we want to do is set up an analog to digital converter so that we can read the potentiometer, which we have hooked up to our TNC. So on our potentiometer, we have one pin hooked up to ground, the other pin hooked up to 3.3 volts, and those are the opposite side pins, and then the wiper is hooked up to pin 14 of our Teensy microcontroller. So as we move the potentiometer knob around, we expect the voltage on pin 14 to change, and we should see that changed in the number that we receive when we're actually monitoring this program as it's running. So for analog to digital reading in Arduino, we don't need to set anything up in the setup function. It's actually very, very simple. The only thing we need to call is this analog read function. And then we pass in the pin that we want to read, and this will automatically set that pin into an analog to digital conversion mode, and it will automatically return the value that it's reading at that instant when this function is called. So at this point in the program, we have an integer that we're going to call pot value for the potentiometer, and then we're calling analog read with the pot pin. This is going to be 14. And once we call this function, whatever the voltage that we get on that pin, uh, on pin 14, will be converted into an integer and stored into pot value. And then we're going to print that on the serial port. And we're going to call, or we're going to open the uh, serial monitor that's built into Arduino. 
And this will give us uh, all the values that are being printed on the serial port at any given time. So I have the program currently running and I have the potentiometer hooked up and it's all the way over to its extreme lowest value. So if I turn that potentiometer up, you can see that the number it's reporting is increasing. So as I crank this up, we would expect the value to go from close to zero, which in the uh, all the way minimum position, we're getting you know, a value of about 10 or so. That's fairly close to zero in the range of 1024. And then as we increase this value, I'm gonna go all the way to the right. We expect that value to get reasonably close to 1024. In this case, it's going up to about 860. Now, it's not going all the way down to zero, nor all the way up to 1024. Uh, this is because the potentiometer doesn't perfectly go down to zero, uh, uh, to zero ohms of resistance or perfectly up to um, a resistance that would you know, block out the signal completely, uh, basically an open circuit. So that's why we can't actually get the value with the knob all the way down to zero or all the way up to 1024. But this was a really good range for us to read um, the position of the knob, and we can use this for other purposes. Now let's say that we want to control the brightness of an LED. We would need to do this using digital to analog conversion. So in other words, we have uh, some brightness in our program that's expressed by an integer, and we want to actually control the brightness of the LED by converting that into some fluctuating voltage. The idea is that if we apply more of a voltage, the LED is brighter, and if we apply less of a voltage, the LED is going to get dimmer. The problem with this is that generally microcontrollers don't provide uh, an electronic way to do this directly. But what they do provide is something called pulse width modulation. So pulse width modulation, or PWM for short, is really just a way of turning on and off a signal very fast at certain rates in order to kind of emulate digital to analog conversion. So for example, let's say we have a square wave here, and on our microcontroller, on the Teensy in particular, we can only generate voltages um, with digital writing that are either going to be zero volts or 3.3 volts but we want to control the intensity of the LED. So if we wanted it to be half bright, instead of providing 3.3 volts, we would want to provide about a volt and a half or 1.6 volts or 1.65 volts or whatever in order to get it to about a half brightness. We can't directly ch create that voltage with the microcontroller, but what we can do is we can turn on and off that 3.3 volt signal very fast at a rate of about a 50% duty cycle. So duty cycle is just a term that means we're generating a square wave at some frequency. So the frequency is basically the rate at which I um, create on-off cycles in the signal. And then the duty cycle is the relative percentage of the time that I spend with the signal on versus off. So think about it this way. Let's say you're in a room and you have a light switch and you've got one single light bulb in the room. If you go over to the light switch and you flick it on and off really fast, then you're gonna see a less amount of light than you would if you just had the light uh, all the way on, like continuously on. And the faster that you flip that switch and the more amount of time that you have it in the on position versus the off position, that's going to generate uh, more brightness in there, more net brightness than if you had it off you know, most of the time. So the duty cycle is just the amount of time that we spend with that signal in the on position versus the off position in a pulse modulated signal or in a signal with a uh, set frequency. So in this example, on the first, uh, the first square wave here, so actually on all three of the examples, we're generating a square wave with a, uh, the same frequency. So three different signals, the same frequency because the overall period, in other words, the, um, the downtime all the way up to the uptime to when it goes back down, um, those period widths are all the same, but the duty cycles are different. So in the first example, we have a 50% duty cycle, which means that the signal is on half of the time and off half of the time. In the second example, there's a 75% duty cycle, which means it's on three quarters of the time and off a quarter of the time. And in the final example, it's on a quarter of the time and off three quarters of the time. So in the bottom example, the 25% duty cycle, if we had this hooked up to an LED or a motor or anything like that that we were driving with this, uh, with this voltage that we were creating, we would expect that to be um, a lesser brightness or a lesser intensity than the two above. And we would expect the middle example there, the 75% duty cycle, to have the, uh, the, the brightest um, intensity of the other examples. So a 100% duty cycle would be a signal that is just continuously on, and then a 0% duty cycle would be a signal that is continuously off. So if you wanted to shut off the LED completely, you would just create a 0% duty cycle, which would just mean pulling the signal all the way to the ground and holding it there. And if you wanted the LED to be at its brightest intensity, you would provide a 100% duty cycle, 
which would mean that you would just pull the voltage all the way up to 3.3 volts and leave it there continuously. Now in our second example, we're going to take an IL612 RGB LED. So this is a regular LED, but it has three different um, color generating features within the LED itself. So we have a blue channel, a red channel, and a green channel, so we can generate RGB colors. And each one of those um, RGB LEDs is actually uh, controlled individually. So it has what's called a common anode, which basically just means that one of the pins on this LED we're going to provide voltage to. And then the other pins, we're going to connect those into microcontroller pins. And we're going to um, create duty cycles that will basically pass that voltage through the LED element and then down into ground. So in this particular example, um, since we have a common anode, which is where the power is going to be applied. When we individually control the red, green, and blue channels, we're going to use um, GPIO pins for that with a pulse width modulation signal. Every time the PWM pin for one of those uh, signals goes low to ground, then current is going to flow from the anode through the LED, um, through the actual light generating part, and then down into the microcontroller pin that we have. So it's kind of like an inverted signal. When the signal goes low, that's when it's actually going to uh, allow current to flow through the LED to create light. So in this particular example, if we had a 0% duty cycle on, let's say, pin 21, where we have the red channel, then the red LED or the red part of the LED is going to be at its brightest intensity. If we had a 100% duty cycle, then the red LED would be at its lowest intensity. It would be off. And if we did a 50% duty cycle, then the red... Uh, the red part of this LED, the red channel, would be at its uh, about 50% brightness. So in this example, we're going to hook up um, the red part of the LED to pin 21 on the Teensy, the green to 22, the blue to 23. And on the anode, we're going to connect that to power. But between the anode and the uh, actual 3.3 volt signal, we're going to include a 220 ohm resistor. We're providing this because uh, we want to limit the amount of current that goes in the LED so that we don't risk burning it out. And if we put a 220 ohm resistor, that means that any of the current that's flowing through the LED, since it's a common anode, um, any of the current that's going to go through the red, green, or blue channel will go through that 220 ohm resistor, and that will uh, limit the net amount of current that can flow through any of the three channels. It's called a current limiting resistor. So anytime you have an LED, you want to include a current limiting resistor just to make sure that you don't um, overload the LED and burn it out. So back in our example code, we're going to make a few changes um, to exhibit the LED. So first of all, uh, in the previous example, I had all of this stuff commented out. This is where I'm actually changing the intensity of the LED. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this out to enable it. And what we're going to do here is we're going to read the potentiometer like before. But every time we read the potentiometer, if the potentiometer value is greater than half of the range, or 512, then we want to go ahead and run through this routine where we actually illuminate the LED individually on all three channels. And we want it to uh, sort of glow into full brightness and then fade into full darkness. So what we're going to do is uh, run an analog write. And then we're going to do that individually for the red, green, and blue pins. So if the potentiometer value is greater than 512, then what we're going to do is go through here and go to the red pin. And then we're going to increase its brightness. So we're going to do an analog write. That's the function that allows us to write to a PWM pin on the Arduino. It has to be a pin that has PWM capability. So be sure you look at the uh, pinout data sheet. And we're going to do the write. And then remember how we said that it's basically inverted logic here because it's a common anode LED? Well, if we want the LED to grow brighter, then we're going to need to basically start at 255. And then we're going to subtract i from there. So that value is going to decrease all the way down to 0. So that's going to go from a full 100% duty cycle down to a 0% duty cycle. And we discussed earlier that since it's inverted logic, because it's common anode, that uh, the 0% duty cycle is the one that's going to have full brightness. So since we're starting out at 100% duty cycle and then going down to 0, that's going to make the red channel get brighter as it goes. And then we're going to delay 10 milliseconds between each change. So this should take uh, about two and a half seconds because it's 10 milliseconds per about 250 iterations. Um, so about 250 or about um, two and a half seconds to actually illuminate the LED all the way up. And then we're going to go here and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to um, dim the LED. So we're going to start from full illumination and then we're going to take it all the way down um, 
to where we have no illumination at all. And then we're going to repeat this process for the green and the blue channels. So over here on our circuit, we actually have um, three different pins that are connected to the LED to drive each of the individual channels. So first of all, we have, uh, well, this variable here on pin 13, that's the onboard LED. So we're not really using that right now. Um, but we have the red, the red pin, green pin, and blue pin on 21, 22, and 23. And to set these up, we have to set the pin mode in our setup function. So this is like a previous examples we showed. The LED pin, the variable called LED pin, is the pin that corresponds to the onboard LED. Um, but we're going to be toggling or um, changing the illumination of the red, green, and blue pin on the multicolor LED. So we need to set the pin mode for those to output, just like we did the onboard LED. So we just uh, set these or call these uh, pin mode functions to set that capability. Then we're going to go ahead and turn off the LEDs completely. Um, so I'm going to call digital write, which is just going to write a logical 0 or 1, or in this case, it'll be 0 volts or 3.3 volts. And I want to send that command to the red pin, green pin, and blue pin. And I'm going to send RGB off, which is a value that I uh, declared up here, which is uh, the high value for the pin. Remember, it's inverted logic. Um, then I'm going to flash the onboard LED, which is what we've done in previous examples, and I'm going to open up the serial communication, um, which we did before for um, basically showing the potentiometer value. So once, uh, once basically this pin mode is set up, then the PWM pins are ready to be used, and then that will allow us to go down into this loop and call the analog write to actually generate different uh, square waves with different duty cycles to change the brightness of the LED. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and run our modified sketch where we've uncommented out, uncommented out all of the um, LED stuff. So I'm going to click upload. It'll compile and uh, upload the code. So now my sketch is running and I have no activity on the LED because the potentiometer is in the minimum position. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the serial monitor so we can see the potentiometer values. And I'm going to adjust this up until I get over 512 and that's where I expect the uh, LED uh, brightening and darkening routine to kick in. So I'm getting close. Once I hit 512, that should kick in. So there's 512. And then this should be um, changing the intensity of the LED now as it goes to a different color. So there was red, here's green, and now there's blue. Growing in intensity and now it should fade. And since the potentiometer is still over 512, it's going to continue to do this until I turn it down. So I'm going to turn this back down to the minimum position, and then once it gets done with the blue flash, then it shouldn't do it again. There, and you can see we're back in the uh, lower potentiometer range, so we're getting an analog-to-digital value of about 15, and I have no activity on the LED.